How like often are you going to therapy? Down. You, you might need to up your therapy sessions. Can you do twice a week? I honestly haven't been going enough lately. And that and I my therapist that. told me I that. I sense that from you. I sense that. She was like, you know, I really love catching up with you. But like, if you came more regularly, we could go deeper. And I was like, yeah, no, these are just catch ups with a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, welcome back. We are not for everyone. We're an existential commentary podcast hosted by two pistachios. I'm really in a pistachio mood because we just, before we started recording, we said something kind of TMI related to pistachio, like a an analogy, a pistachio analogy. I won't bring it here. Um, but we were talking about that. And then I've also been really eating a lot of pistachios because I picked up some Lebanese sweets recently oh, yeah. covered in pistachios oh that's so good i had a pistachio cherry tart yesterday so we're pretty synced up and i would like to name that if i didn't know what pistachio related i don't think i could ever guess what a pistachio related tmi reference would be and i'm not <laughs> going to explain here i'm not going to explain they can they can figure it out they can use their imaginations and figure out what we might be saying I also realized that I, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see in my video that I have this little stuffed animal behind me that kind of looks like it could be a pistachio, but it's an avocado and his name is Timothy. And I just want to address that real quick. He's, <laughs> he's my son and my lover just... and it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Incest uh, is pretty, no, I shouldn't say not cool. good. Not good. Pretty not good is what I was going to say. But I do like that your avocado is just levitating in the corner there on your little invisible shelf. On my invisible shelf that you influenced me to buy. I have them everywhere now and I can't get enough. Like if you just want to put a thing in the middle of the wall somewhere, you can yeah. do that with these invisible shelves. We love it. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm in. I'm filming in a weird place today because I'm filming in my bedroom. It's a mess. It's a freaking mess in here. Don't look at anything. It's messy. Come on. The microphone like everybody always comments that your microphone looks like a little chode and today it's it's at an angle so it's less chode like I mean a chode can be you know curved but um I've, I've seen them it's like the size of your face with how close yeah. it is to the to the laptop I guess I'm you're worried loud. about being louder than me yeah <laughs> yeah whatever it's just you're me feeling and loud microphone. so what do you want to be loud about do you have something like top no, of mind that you're no. ready to scream no, I don't have any thoughts. I don't have any thoughts. No. Okay. I have thoughts. Um, <laughs> this is, I don't think I can categorize this with any specific like segment name, but maybe it's a petty complaint. You tell me. I was recently reflecting on how difficult it is, how stressful it is to run into somebody that you kind of know, like your neighbor that you see all the time in the building and they're with their dog. And you can't remember the sex of the dog, or you can't what? tell. What? Even if it's what? a new dog, that took a right tell. turn. That took a right turn. Why? No, don't relate. Just I project. get so stressed when I can't figure out the sex of the dog, and I want to be like, "Oh, how old is it?" You can't say it. That's going to offend them. I could say they, but then it feels like a weird statement on like they them, which I am supportive of. But I, I don't know. I feel weird and I want to ask about the dog, but I don't know if it's he or she. And I feel a like dog, I've already met them. A yeah. dog that you've already met and they've told you like the dog's name and presumably the gender yes. of the dog. And oh, I just be like, I just be like, look at this fucking guy. <laughs> Whether it's a girl or a guy, I'm just like, look at this fucking dog. That's a good way to put it. Fucking look at you. Look at you, dude. I That's it. had this happen to me this morning. And first of all, I was in the elevator wearing my Turby twist on my head, drying my hair out of the shower. And I was like, I don't care. I want to take out the trash right now. I'm leaving this on my head. I assumed uh, kind of foolishly that I wouldn't run into anyone in like the three minutes it would take me That's to take the out the trash. the only time. It's the only time. First of all, if you walk out of your apartment in a Turby twist, about 100% <laughs> chance you're running into your ex. Running I don't care into, where he lives. Running into my neighbor. The yeah. only, and it's like the only neighbor I actually know and have spoken to like several times. If it was any other neighbor, because we didn't have a rapport, I almost would have felt more chill about the Turby twist. But because I have a rapport with this one, I felt okay. like I had to address it. So he was like, hey, how's it going? And I was like, uh, you know, I'm just like walking out of the house with my towel on my head. And he was like, oh, it's cool. And then he didn't, he didn't make eye contact with me the entire time we were in the elevator. He's looking down. So I was like, now he feels like it's intimate oh, no. to see me in my towel. 
And then his dog was with him and I've I've talked to them so many times and I felt like I needed to continue the conversation because of the towel on my head or something. Like I just needed to make the moment normal. Right. So I wanted to be like, oh, your dog. Trying to recover. Like, this dog, this fucking dog. And I- This fucking not, dog. I could not do it. I was like, oh yeah, it, I feel like I just um kind of like muddled over the pronouns in the sentence. So I'd be like, Oh, they, it, 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 not a barker not a barker not a barker <laughs> I feel like you could yeah I don't know what I actually do I feel like I I resort to they a lot it's um, probably the right thing it just feels awkward to me I or, feel like or you can they you can need me to know you you can address them as you just like you know directly oh that's a good idea yeah. you're a good or, I can't say you're a good boy or good girl I don't know you're doing a really good job you just say you're doing a really good job that's all you say <laughs> Maybe that's it. Okay, so you don't relate to this stress. No, no, <laughs> no. I was, I thought I was really on board when, with just like running into people you acquaintance level know. That's what stresses me out. My greatest yeah. nightmare, and I like my neighbors and we have a good rapport. And yet still every time I'm like, fuck me, I can't, I can't. I don't know why. Something about when you're trying to coordinate like, well, how quickly are you trying to walk into the building? How quickly am I trying to walk away? And like, how much time <laughs> yeah. do you both have? Sometimes one person's in a rush and the other's not. And then like, that's when you get into that thing where like somebody's trying to be friendly and the other's not. You've been in both positions and it can like, there can be a weird mismatch or maybe we're both walking in. Like how, we're both in the mood to be friendly. We both have the time to be friendly, but like not forever. Like how long is this going to go on? Right. Okay, now, now I'm done here. My biggest nightmare is, was especially... Like in New York, getting on the subway, seeing somebody you know, really to any degree, on the subway, and then commuting mm. with them. I hate commuting with people. I hate the worst. Even walking with people, like, oh, we're leaving lunch together. Are we walking in the same direction? No. Tell me which direction you're walking, and I will go the other way. I'm same. not commuting with you. I don't like it. I can't pay attention to the conversation and to where I'm going. So I'm going to have a half-assed conversation. I'm going to end this really nice lunch we had with you thinking I'm a little bit rude or a little bit disinterested because <laughs> I'm trying to remember where I'm going and I can't fully pay attention or I'm going to forget where I'm going. And then, and then I'm going to be mad about that. And I just hate commuting with people. Yeah. Hate. I, I will spend the last couple minutes of a lunch like that thinking to myself, Oh, where, which direction did they walk up to the restaurant from so that oh. I can remember like where they parked so that I can go the opposite direction or like, Oh, we where's their weak. home in relationship to here? It is a terrible, terrible thing, but I will literally think to myself, like, which way do I think they're going so that I can wow. be sure to say I'm going the other way, even yeah. if it means I'm going to like circle the block and go back in the same direction. It is embarrassing. Is, That's an embarrassing is- thing. Yeah. What, well, it, what, embarrassing to walk with them or embarrassing what you just said? I'm embarrassed what I just said. Like that I'm is... embarrassed too. And I do the same thing. I'm embarrassed for you too. That's great. We I can't believe it. you do that. I can't believe you do. So if I get I really, know. I, I can, I never take it so far to guess where they are walking. Cause you get that wrong. If they're not going home, maybe they're going right. to another stop. You don't know which direction. So if I'm really stressing on it, First of all, obviously, I don't have enough things to stress about in my life. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree. I don't have enough things to stress about. But if I am really stressed on it, I'm so hot. I'm immediately hot. Which I Please. Wonder, uh, my immediately- butts, my butt is yeah. sweating already. <laughs> then I'll be like, then I'll be like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom before we go, which is also always true. I'm peeing 90% of my day. And so I'll be like, I'm going to go to the bathroom first. And if they're like, I'll wait for you. Oh, no you won't how dare how do you not know that this is the international cue for i need to be alone now so you're gonna stand there while i feign taking a shit and then we're (laughs) gonna walk out together and then we're gonna do the fucking dance like what's wrong with you that is Mm -mm. that's a friendship ender to me (laughs) oh my gosh it's like people it's it's similar it's on par with people on a plane who can't take the airpods in your ears as a cue not to talk to you it's like this is a known cue around the globe if uh-uh. I have headphones on or if uh-uh. I say at the end of a meal, I'm going to the bathroom, it means we are going our separate ways now. We are not talking. We are not spending any more time together. Respect it. I would respect <laughs> it if the roles were reversed. Like this is known. Yeah. These are the cues. Respectfully, respectfully, if you also have to pee right now, you're going to hold it. I called right. it. You get a UTI and walk out the door. <laughs> like respectfully, you that's do that. How this Show works. me that you care. Show me yeah. that you care. Get a Show UTI. Show me that you for care me. and walk the fuck away, please. My God, yeah. don't don't loiter out there because I'm gonna this be out is, in a few minutes. 
this is relieving to hear. I need what I do need is for listeners to tell us that they feel the same. And specifically, I need listeners who are like extroverted, outgoing, like similar personality type to me because you will claim yeah. introversion. And so this like lines up a little more. But I do it too, even as an extrovert. So I need I yeah. need backup. I need someone to say I'm not the worst person. So what bothers you about it? Because I, what bothers you about it? Is it just like the awkwardness of like, I've moved on to the next thing and you're missing up my pacing now? I think so. Like at the end of a meal, if I'm just meeting up with someone for dinner and we have like no other plans and it's just one-on-one us and it's like maybe a looser connection, not my best friend, but a good friend that I'm whatever, having a A one-on-one session with. Call those ones Lucy. Okay, sure. A Lucy. Yeah, Lucy. Okay, I like that. Um. I just made that I, up. I, that was really clever because it's loose, <laughs> but also Lucy's a name. So yeah, it's yeah. perfect. So Thank anyway, I, I had to explain the joke to myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like at the end of that type of interaction, like I'm ready to go. I've given you everything I can give you. I've given you two hours of and undivided more. attention. I've like really tried to deliver and make this a special experience. So you walk away saying in, spending time with Jess is the best, even though I don't probably want to do it again anytime soon, but I want you to want it. You know, I need to leave you wanting more. And uh, so at the end, how like, often are you going to therapy? You, you might need to up your therapy sessions. Can you do it twice a week? <laughs> I honestly haven't been going enough lately. And that and my therapist that. told me I that. I sense that from you. I sense that from you. She was like, I, I met, I had a, session with her last week for the first time in like a month probably and she mm. was like she was like you know I really love catching up with you but like if you came more regularly we could go deeper and I was like yeah no these are just catch-ups with a friend yeah <laughs> these are just catch-ups first of all I agree second of all I don't think you're in the position to say it seems like you might right. benefit from that which you know obviously they don't but it is such a oh you go off on that subject too about just like the I know. awkwardness of anyway it's their job they have to do it but um keep going Well, yeah. I mean, I just think at the end, like when the check's coming and we've already spent this time together, I'm like winding down my brain ready to go be alone in my home. Like as much as I'm an extrovert and an outgoing and I love being social, I also need a lot of um, like recharging time to just like be a fart in my bed. And (laughs) and that's what I'm getting ready to do. So then the thought of like having to spend the time walking out together and like making additional small talk before we go to our cars like we already had the big conversation there's also something awkward about like having a really deep conversation with someone one-on-one like maybe we had a really great time and we like really connected and we talked about something really meaningful and then like that conversation kind of closes and the check comes and you're ready to leave and then you're like, so um, so where are you weather? going next? Like, you went, yeah, it's where like weird. Next? It's That's like so after funny. sex. That's what it's it like is. Small talk after sex. It's like we just did something yeah. so intimate, and now we have to be like, yeah, um, what are yeah. you up to the rest of the weekend? Like, I don't care. It's yeah, just don't care. a nightmare. That's, I think that that's so articulate. I feel like that is part of what it is. It's like let's really undermine this whole experience with talking about where we parked. Yeah, cool. Right. 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 Okay, moving on. That's it. Um, we did a good job. We t- actually we did. We really did. Oh, I don't have any. I, I don't have any. I don't have any solution for you though with your neighbor. So, oh, I just needed to feel seen, which I don't. So I'll <laughs> work on it. <laughs> don't come for. Don't come to me for validation. Which I'll work I on it somewhere else. Which I don't. Oh, does that actually hurt you? Have I hurt you? No, not at all. No, not at all. It's just it just not reinforces what Barbara told me, <laughs> which is that I should be scheduling more therapy sessions. I don't. <laughs> I yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. It's fine. It's not your fault. That's why this is not just us talking. It's like us talking, and we do our best with each other. But then it's up to the the rest of the the listeners it's up to them to make us feel seen when we can't do it for each other it's okay we're totally. just two people yeah right <laughs> i'm not a hero please please <laughs> i mean i have more to say but i don't want to dominate all of our topics so let me I'll pause. talk over you why don't you start and i'll talk over you how about that okay great that sounds really good actually <laughs> i think that's our unofficial structure anyway <laughs> actually i think i'm gonna go into like more of an insightful one and then i have silly bits for the end does that sound does that work for you yeah, I love that. Okay. Okay. So I recently watched the show 
and this isn't going to be about the show. It's just like the tee up. Um, I recently watched the show Shrinking on Apple TV. There's one season out. I really, really, really recommend it. Like, honestly, if you like this podcast, you will probably like that show because it's a really like expertly done blend of comedy and humor and like dark comedy um, with more insightful, thoughtful, like heartwarming, crying opportunities. Like it has it all. It's really good. Um, That's all I'll say about the show. But there was a scene in the show when they talked about patterns and repeating patterns. The show is about therapists. um, And so that's like not a good enough pitch, but the main characters are therapists. Um, They're talking about repeating patterns. And one of them says to the other, like the only way to get over this pattern that you're in is to boop it, to like do a boop. And he explained that as just doing anything different. Like when your daughter does that thing and then you fall into the same pattern that you always fall into that keeps you guys distant from each other, instead of responding in the same way you always would, boop, do anything, say the word boop, throw a spoon at the wall. Like you can do anything. You don't even have to do the right thing. You don't even have to do like something so meaningful and op- the opposite of what you've always done, just do anything to break the pattern. And then it opens up like a whole new world of possibility. And it really, really struck me. I spend a lot of time thinking about patterns because I'm like painfully self-aware and aware of my patterns constantly and like mad at myself for the patterns that I get into in relationships and with my family and all these different things. And that really did something for my brain. And I actually like have been trying to apply it in little ways and finding success, you know, little moments of like, oh, I feel better about that. Like, I feel like now I can make progress. Um, So I wanted to share it. And I wonder if that resonates with you at all. I love that. I loved that. um, I I immediately liked it, like agreed, right? Theoretically, Uh, immediately agreed with it. Like in theory, right? You want to break the pattern. We get into ruts, we get into patterns, like pattern dynamics. But what I loved that surprised me was that the boop or whatever can be something so seemingly like insignificant and kind of random. I like even saying the word boop or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I do, I do like that. Um, I can totally see how that would open up just like a different, ah, just get you out of like the trance, the trance yes. of like this, is, especially I, I'm thinking of really intimate long-term relationships family comes to mind number one of like the trance of this is how I talk to my mom the trance of like this is how I deal with my sister or whatever when this fight comes up I know they're going to do this and I know I'm going to do this and like make all these assumptions and jump all these steps ahead and it's pretty much fair to nobody and it I know I think one of the things I struggle with most is thinking that I know what's best for everyone and thinking Mm -hmm. I know best like what the solution would be to get out of this And like, I feel that way because often I'm right, but I, I feel that certainty also in things that just like extend and prolong fights. So, um, I guess, yeah, anything to like, I think I could benefit from anything that kind of like jiggles me out of that. Like, I know what the next step needs to be. Yeah. 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 And I think it just um, relieves some of the pressure. I think that's what I like about the idea of it can even be as simple as saying the word boop. Like, obviously, most times that's probably not what you're going to be doing in these situations. But it just to think about it that way and reframe it in your head that way, like relieves the pressure of, oh, there's like years of of stuff that's built up to create this pattern. And I recognize it and I see it and it bothers me and I want this to be different but I don't know how because it's like been building for so long and it's so comfortable and it's so just like natural and a part of our like operating system at this point and so to think that something as easy as saying the word boop um could could start a process of fixing it like makes it more approachable and makes it more like okay well I could do that so I'm not going to get like too deep into this example Um, but just to make it more real, I can share a little bit about how I did that recently. So my sister and I, I, it's just the two of us. I'm the oldest of two girls. Um, she's three and a half, four years younger than me. And we're close in the sense that like, 
we're all we got. And my mom, especially as we were growing up, like really instilled in us, like whenever we fought, my mom would get so upset and we fought a lot because you just do that as siblings. Um, And she would like sit us down and make us like look at each other and hug it out and like apologize and listen and do all the things because she was like, you're all you have, like fucking figure this out, fucking get over it, whatever. You're all you have. So we are really close in the sense that like, we know that both of us deep down and like, we have that type of bond. But I would say that we've struggled over the years with closeness in terms of like the way you experience closeness with a friend. Like it's really different with a sister, with a sibling. I want to have like a friendship with her, but she's my little sister. And my family was one where like, we didn't talk about everything. We didn't talk about really personal things with each other. It's just, there's a lot of things that go unsaid and family wasn't really the space for. And so that's like trickled out to me and her in some ways. And I think we both have expressed wanting that to change and wanting that to look different, but we just fall into the same pattern all the time. When there's an opportunity to share Mm -hmm. more about my life with her, Mm -hmm. I don't like I could, she's not done anything to make me feel like I can't, but this pattern has persisted and it's just easier to like, not go that extra mile and tell her about that thing that I'm really stressed about or share with her, like the sweet thing that happened with my boyfriend or like whatever it is. And um, so I don't. And so she was in town for like 24 hours last weekend for Taylor Swift. And we hung out a little bit and there was an opportunity in conversation for me to like change that a little bit. And I didn't know how to say it and I didn't know what to do, but I knew that I'd been feeling this way. And I just like started talking. I was like, speaking of that, like whatever she said something. And I was like, this could be a segue. And I was like, speaking of that, like la, 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 la. And immediately like a pressure released off of me. I felt it release off of her. She was like, we can do better at this. Like, I get why it's been hard, but we can do better at this. And I was like, I I don't know how I just want to like, wait, 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 wait. When you said speaking of the thing you said was something really personal you opened up about, or you started speaking about how you both want to improve on this thing. Both, both. It was like, speaking of that, I would love to tell you about this thing in my life. Um, and how but did, we was she able to haven't like really it? done that. And oh, and like okay. the reason is because I feel like I'm in this pattern and I don't really know how to break the pattern. So what I'm doing right now is so just you named finding the a pattern. segue. So you I named, named the pattern. You named the pattern. That's so much more powerful. Like just naming this invisible thing that's shackling us. Yes. That's everything. That's, that's yes. like more intimacy than even whatever personal story you're probably going to share. That's the most intimate. Exactly. Exactly. The unsayable thing. Yeah. And something about like, I did way more than just boop, but something about the boop like framework yeah. made me feel like it was going to be okay to do something like that. So I was like, yeah, I, I named the pattern. I found a yeah. window of opportunity. I was like, I want to tell you about this thing. We never really share a lot, but like, I want to. Mm. And like, I know that's a pattern for us. And I know that it's partly my fault. And like, I want to break it. I don't know how. And I told her about the boop yeah. too. Um, And she was so obviously like loving and affirming and accepting and like listened and immediately after like for the next couple hours that we were spending that day together we were like so having so much more fun like talking way more about a lot of different aspects of life that like we don't usually um and it just felt very freeing and like immediately I saw the reward and I'm really I know that that's just like a moment in time so it's going to be an ongoing thing of like we need to continue to build this with each other but it just broke a pattern. Like all of a sudden I feel free. I'm like, Oh, that pattern's broken. I'm no longer stressed about this. Like, I feel like we're on the same page and I feel like I can have the relationship that I want with her. And it's, uh, it's really cool. And that's the thing that helped me was that line from that show. <laughs> that's wild. That's it's, it, that's like magic. It's magic. You like broke a spell and I'm sure, you know, it's not broken forever. It's like a continuous thing. You got a pattern, whatever, but literally that sounds magical to me. Yeah. It's crazy. This thing really that feels was. impossible and undoable and unmentionable and whatever. Yeah. That's awesome. 
Yeah. So now I'm like looking for other patterns. I'm like, where can I do this again? Like it felt fun. It felt good. (laughs) Like I'm addicted to the feeling of the change, you know? I I don't love like so many like therapy terms. I don't love the term boop, but the concept is very fun. Why do they have to name it something so like emasculating to me? Like, why are they making? Why are they making me say that? As but a woman, do don't it. emasculate me, please. No, I, I take a lot of pride in my masculinity, um, as well as my femininity. It's equal. Get get over it. Moving on. It's okay. fine. <laughs> it's fine. God, um, you. It makes me think about like at least in that specific moment, like you said this seemingly unsayable thing. And underneath it was a moment of intimacy. Like that's what that is, that closeness. And I, I'm thinking about it a lot. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this guy now and there are a lot of moments of just like really wonderful emotional intimacy. And then in any relationship, you can get to moments where you lose that. Maybe because like there's a question on your mind or you've started retreating a little bit or they've retreated or there's something miscommunicated or something you don't understand, or like there's a million like silent things that start Mm. to like layer on top of closeness, layer on top of intimacy. And I just feel so, I like don't ever want to lose it. It's the the worst feeling to lose your sense of intimacy. And I've I've been doing a relentless job of just (laughs) like saying (laughs) what's on my mind, which I think feels maybe obvious to you and people who listen to me here, because I am very blunt here, but it's something I really struggle with. And I think most people do in romantic dynamics, especially. And um, he made me feel really good. He even called it out. He was just like, yeah, it's, I really appreciate how you just like say things to me. You just mm-hmm. keep asking questions. And um, it's really hard. I have to do it mechanically. And like, sometimes I have to go first and reflect on like, okay, why am I feeling distant? Why am I not feeling closeness? And then I will have to like go and write down or write it down to myself, almost like a journal entry. Like, this is what I'm wondering. I wish I could ask them this. I wish I could ask them this. And then you've named it. Then you can just go and ask it. This thing that you feel like you can't ask. You feel like you can't mention to your sister, like the magic spell that's keeping you a little bit distant. You have to like work around it some other way. And that's the pattern of always working around it. Whereas like this true thing that you hold in person, like, a full band outside um (laughs) like the true thing that actually bonds you is like you might live such different life lives but you have this huge thing in common this like silent gap uh, is kind of what's bonding you and you can like then you get to talk about that and it's it's just like as soon as you name the unsayable thing I I don't know I feel like if it's the truth it 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 never goes too badly like I feel like there's always some level of closeness underneath it so that's something I've been like thinking about a lot. Um, it's so, so hard. It's so hard. It's so hard. I do the same thing. I'll sometimes write like a list of questions or a list of like things to discuss with my boyfriend or something. And once I write them down, I'm like, oh, those aren't like scary things at all. And then once I say them, they're even, I they come out of my mouth and I'm like, I it's like embarrassing. It's like so sad that I was scared to say <laughs> this. It's not so sad because like, I've also like practiced this with other people who don't, who make you feel stupid, who make you feel stupid for asking it. It's like, you have to end up with somebody who makes that feel like a reasonable question. Unfortunately, until then they do kind of make you feel stupid. You do feel stupid. It's like this past week, um, our like scheduling worked out where we spent Monday night together and then we weren't going to see each other until Friday, which is like, fine. That's fucking how a week goes sometimes. Those be weeks. <laughs> I really felt in the middle of the week, like, oh, this is not sustainable. Like my brain immediately goes to like, oh God, if it's like this forever, I can't do that. I need more quality time, like whatever. So funny. Yeah. And I don't know. Of course, it's not going to be like that forever. It just happens. I to be also that way this think week. that way. Why am I? No, I completely agree. It's obscene. Yeah. Well, this yeah. is forever. Hold on. It's a. It's been an hour. First of all. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> and so I saw him on Friday, and I was like, and I he was like, "How was your week?" And we were both like, you know, it was nice. We were reconnecting, and we missed each other clearly. And I was like, um. I feel like next week I'm going to need a midweek. I'm going to need a midweek hang. Like I I can't do 
like beginning and end of the week and he was like okay and I like started crying a little while I was saying it I was like I hope it's like I don't want to ask too much or like because I've felt in other relationships like I was asking too much by wanting more time from the person especially the reason that our schedules are so different is because he's like embarking on a really big step in his work and it's changing his schedule and so I I didn't want to ask for too much given that I know his work schedule is getting a lot crazier and I've been in that situation situation before with partners. Um so I started to get teary being like I I think next week I'm going to need like a midweek thing and he was just like okay okay like he was confused why I was crying but he knows me so he's like she's always crying um and he knows about like past relationship stuff too so he he gets the context but I was just like why why does this feel, why do, why does this still exist in me that like, I, I feel crazy too much, too much. I feel too much for asking what I need, but then part of the crying, part of the emotion that comes out when I do ask for it is like positive emotion actually, because of how well received it is by him. So I'm both like, crying for a past version of myself and crying because I'm like oh my god it's okay to say this like it's a weird happy and sad tear everybody gets a cry yeah 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 it makes sense I'm sure it just continues I don't know it continues I I just agree I agree and I relate and I don't I don't get it and it feels silly a lot feels silly a lot it feels silly feels so silly (laughs) It does feel silly a lot. Let's talk about something <clears throat> silly because that's as much bearing my soul as I can do for the day. Um, you did a really good job. You did a thanks. really good job. Thanks. I like pulled somehow. First of all, first of all, I was just laying. I like pulled some muscle over my ribs or something. That's why I'm trying to stretch <laughs> it right now. And I pulled it by laying on the couch. Literally, I was laying on the couch earlier I mean, I wasn't just laying there. I was also texting pretty hard, (laughs) but I got up and I like pulled something over my ribs. What? Is this the rest Uh, of my life? Is there there something over your ribs? Like there's there's muscle. muscle? There's definitely muscles in between your ribs. I guess that's what abs are. I'm not familiar. So I I do not think, I do not think that's what abs are at all. I don't think you have ribs there. No, between, there's definitely things like between your ribs. Okay. yeah, Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. (laughs) <laughs> I had to I had to touch the area and like get familiar yeah I think it's hard to feel until you've heard it and then you're breathing anyway <sighs> I'm sorry you're that's feeling my this complaint. it if is I'm doing... probably the rest yeah. of your life because it is, that's true as soon as I turned 30 I was talking to someone about this like <gasps> people always say things like oh once you hit 25 or once you hit 30 or whatever it's all downhill for he- from here people and I never so felt annoying. that people are so I know. annoying it's such shut an up. annoying thing to say and just shut up I never really felt it at any age until I turned 30 and I was actually like oh it's true there's some, there this is different there's something yeah, you don't different say it to people here. you don't say it to people it's so annoying no. I hate Let I think they enjoy huge, their lives huge pet peeve people looking back on other uh life stages that they've already passed through and being like but of course you should know that it's this way and compared to what I'm going through now it's <laughs> nothing like I I even really hate people minimizing children's problems and children's stressors because like children they they don't like they they don't have zero stressors they just don't they don't have a they don't have a job they hold but they right. have they have a th- as if that's the only way to be stressed like their job is basically like when we constantly remind them of them that they're having to like perform to the satisfaction of their parents of the authorities like perform this way and that way and um you know they're learning all these social rules and like they're so they're, they're literally growing and like physically developing and there, there's so much that they're working on and that matters and that feels up in the air and scary and their problems aren't lesser. They're just not your current problems. And I I find it so fucking myopic to, I don't know, for any life stage to be like, oh, well, well, it's not a job worry. So it's not a big deal. Like right. the fuck? When you were a kid and your whole world was your mom and your dad and your best friend, and you know your best friend moves away that's 30 percent of the things in your life are now Mm -hmm. gone it's a big deal 30 percent of the things in your life like it it is a big deal 
Um, I just hate people doing that in general. It's like, well, you won't know stress until you're my age. Okay. Well, listen, I have some, I have some elderly people that I would like you to talk to so that they can tell you that your problems don't matter. Does that help? Right. Yeah. I, and the idea that like a job worry or a job stress is the pinnacle of stress. Like that's actually the biggest fallacy of them all. It's like, okay, like get a grip. There are so many bigger things and you're right for kids. Big things are, the size is different. Their body size is different and their problem size is different. Like to them, uh, something small to you would feel huge and that's reasonable. And I feel like we're too hard on a lot of things that kids deal with probably. So I get it. I'm with you. Yeah, it's very um, somebody messaged us a not a personality that I thought was just spot on. And I just could not agree with more. Give it to me liking halloween <laughs> people that's, turn that into their personality you're allowed to like hilarious. halloween i like halloween just fine totally. I, yeah i get into it i like a costume i like a night of fun and antics so funny so but funny. some people are like all year long just chomping at the bit waiting for halloween and like it's and they, their whole, yeah and then that and they, month they go fucking crazy and it's like I, the only time they're alive I think, okay, I think I've just articulated for myself what qualifies something, what tips you over the edge into being not a personality. I think it's, I think it's when your affinity for something, you expect other people to give you a certain reaction for it. It's like, (laughs) if, if you're, if you're just like busy liking Halloween and like journaling about Halloween and like planning for Halloween all year, amazing. Sure. I love a freak. I love a freak. All, mm-hmm. all of my people are freaks. But as soon as you like expect me to think you're cute for it or expect me to like applaud you for it or like be more interested in you for it, certainly I am not. Now it's not a personality. Yes. If it's if you're doing it just for you, cool as hell. Do whatever you want. Yeah, it, it's not even, yeah, it's not even the level of interest in Halloween. It's like what you expect me to do about it because I'm not going to do nothing. Wow, that was so perfectly articulated. And <laughs> I'm immediately thinking back to when I was in high school and college and just out of college, like any time from the ages of 12 to 22, probably, I was look at, so badly trying to know what my personality was, you know, because you're fucking growing up and you don't really know yet. Such that a I was painful like, desires. So <laughs> I was like, please, I just want to know. I just want to know this person that I inhabit every day. And I would just look for things like every TV show was my personality. You know, the OC was my personality. And then the office was my personality. Um those are the best examples I can think of, but I, I was a person that like became fixated on certain things for like a period of time. And I feel like that's because I didn't really know myself. So I had to like wow. latch on to something. Okay. Yeah. And now I don't, I mean, like there's a lot of things I I'll talk your ear off about love Island is about to come back and it's the whole, only thing I'm thinking about, but it's not my personality. You don't have to do anything about that other than maybe listen to me sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Love it. And I will. I really will. Thanks. It comes mm-hmm. back. The first episode is on Hulu right now as we speak. And I don't get to watch it until tomorrow because my boyfriend and I are planning to watch the first episode together. And I'm just like pretty upset about it. And I might watch it <laughs> and then act like I haven't seen it. We'll see. What? You're going to lie. You're going to lie to me. No. Act like I-, I haven't seen it. That's all so funny. <laughs> I've done that. I will say I've done <laughs> That's that. Crazy. Crazy once behavior. before crazy then we watched with who were you with him for with him, with him. i don't you, remember did you what convince show it him? was did you convince him i just yeah i acted like nothing was different That's and hilarious. i had to kind of like you know i had to feign surprise at certain scenes i hope he does not listen to this because i don't that think is that so happened. fucking funny that's like beautiful and so sad that's beautiful <laughs> It's it's, I could not it's like such a relationship pillar like you have your shows together that you watch together yeah. and you can't fuck that up and I get mad if he ever suggests that he might mess that up right we're only human you know we can only do so much <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a night tonight maybe I'll watch a show I I'm I'm having like a first down night that I've had in a long time I'm really excited I think I'm solo go for a run. Oh, solo night. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Solo night. Down with the hose, and the hose are me 
and the walls. And Amazing. I think I'm going to eat some fucking fruit. I'm going to eat a bunch of different fruits in a crazy order. I might have like an oh. apricot, then a little melon, and then like an Stop. apple. And like- Stop. <laughs> Can you explain to me what like normal fruit order would be? <laughs> <laughs> I think a normal fruit order, um... um no i can't explain you could never how do you understand. feel okay another question <laughs> another way of getting at the same thing how do you feel about fruit salad oh i don't like to mix them okay i don't really like to mix them yeah so you eat fruits definitely in an order <laughs> yeah i will i'm trying to figure out if it's hard to soft i feel like mm. no nah, i think it's act- i think it's actually soft to hard but um <laughs> work your way up <laughs> yeah uh I just have a lot of fruit right now and it's all ripening at the same time so I'm gonna take care of that I might go for a run I might watch a show do some laundry that's it I'm I pretty excited it. though yeah I'm thrilled for you I love a Friday or Saturday night of nothingness it's perfect what day is it it's Saturday, Saturday. yeah it's Saturday. okay and cool. it and it's the right time to do something like that oh Okay, and then on on idioms, on last week, I talked about how I'm not good at idioms because my parents are foreign. And so I just like didn't learn, they, they didn't really use a lot of typical American idioms in the way that they spoke. And so I didn't really pick that up growing up. Mm-hmm. But there are tons of Lebanese idioms. And I was reminded of this this week. And one of my favorites that I would love to share and get your reaction to, I think about it all the time. My sister and I are talking about potentially getting a tattoo associated with this idiom because my parents like, they say it every quarterly, there will be a situation and they say this idiom in response. Oh, I'm so excited. Do you want to eat the grapes or kill the guard? So this is an English translation of something that's said in Arabic. But okay. basically the idea is if you imagine like a courtyard where there's grapes like far on one side, like on a pedestal at the end of the courtyard, but there's a guard in between you and the grapes. In order to get to the grapes, you could kind of like go around the guard or find a way to like be nice to the guard and ask him or whatever, or uh, you could kill the guard. Oh to get to the grapes so the kind idiom, of unnecessarily like killing the kind, of, kind un- of unnecessary exactly so the Ooh, idea, i like it it's so good it's like basically keep your eye on the prize like you don't have to like make enemies along the way yeah. when what well, you're like, trying to do can be achieved without that that's kind of okay. the, the sentiment it's kind of like what are you in this for yes yeah Ooh, that is cool. That is not what I thought it was going to be. That is cool. I like that. Yeah. My sister and I were talking about getting just grapes as a tattoo. Speaking of fruit, grapes. too. Um, okay. Would it be oh, in honor of that? Like the word grapes, which if you had the word grapes oh. as a tattoo, that would make me laugh so hard. But I'm assuming you mean the image of grapes. I meant the imagery, but now <laughs> I'm reconsidering what? it. What if you just got like a prison cheek tattoo that said grapes? <laughs> She killed the Wait, guard. That's perfect. She the fucking guard. Yeah, she killed the guard. That's what happens. Um, all I want is grapes. All I want is grapes. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Um, I'll I'll see if I'll keep a list of different Arabic idioms as I think of them and share them periodically because there's so many good ones and like the English translate translation isn't even doesn't do it justice. Like it's more descriptive. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the original language, but. That one kind of like uh, governs everything I do. <laughs> I like that. How was um? How was this week for you? It was good. Um, it was so long. I feel like the week, like was too like much the work, week was of my life, or or was it really slow at work? It was. <laughs> there was enough work to be done. It wasn't like the busiest week ever, but it was kind of normal. Um, but I procrastinated like crazy and there's still stuff that it's I was crazy how that it's crazy how that makes the work week harder yeah 
<laughs> I know, right? So like I constantly have this one task that I still haven't done. Don't do it. On my mind. <laughs> let me, let me, let me I'm waiting do <laughs> until my teammate like does it for me because she might. And I don't want to take advantage of her because she's actually one of the people at work that I like really like the most. But she sounds keeps like saying kind of kind of sounds like you want to take advantage. She keeps of her. saying that she has time and that she'll do it. It's like a, t- a project that we're working oh, on together. And oh, if she's volunteering. Oh, if she's volunteering, volunteering. That's hers. girl, I want you to be happy. I want you to do the things you want to do. do right. It. Yeah. Please don't let me take this. She's about to go out on maternity leave too. So I'm like, let's, you know, use it until we lose it. Like, sure. If she's volunteering, if she's volunteering, that is not your problem. Yeah. That's so that might happen. But I'm still in the phase of pretending that I'm going to do it. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Like, (laughs) I I have to do that for a little bit longer. Okay. So now that's your problem. Wow. (laughs) So you need to, you need to, you're hoping. You're blindly hoping that there's a second round of this game you guys are playing where she really doubles down and offers and you can be like okay now you can do it i'm anticipating that next week there will be one more thing added to my plate where i can say like oh shoot like this thing really takes yeah. priority and is really taking up my time and then i will take her up on her offer it's a very me, yeah. Game. yeah it's a beautiful game the answer me this <laughs> who who is being more disingenuous in this dynamic you or her Oh my God. That's such a good question. Um, <laughs> honestly, that's really tough because <laughs> I'm so disingenuine. <laughs> well, I am because I'm playing a game here. Like on one yeah. hand, I want to say I'm being myself. You know, what I'm doing is very myself. I'm such a procrastinator with things that I don't want to do. I actually like, um, yeah, I, but you're I, not I, being yourself with, with her, with her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm, I'm feigning something with her but she's yeah. probably feigning that she wants to do this so i really don't totally. know like, she doesn't want to yeah. do it whose feign is the stupider feign is feign a noun like that maybe hers i don't know i think it's maybe hers. hers yeah i would yeah i agree because mine yours. is coming from a place of authenticity <laughs> <laughs> as it always wow. is but yeah the that. week was long it felt really long i don't know like i had i had a similar uh, I had a similar procrastination that totally worked out in my favor this week. I owed someone, I was like, I've been making, this is like a project I haven't shared about, but I'm making videos for a different YouTube channel somewhere. And I had, I owed them thumbnail images. This will, I'll talk about this later. It doesn't really matter, but I owed them some thumbnail images and then they wanted some more or something. And I just didn't have time to do it this week. <laughs> and so I just didn't do it. And then I was like, well, they'll ask me to do it again. And I'll say, I forgot and I can do it next week. And then Mm. they did ask me to do it again. But then by the time I replied to the email, they were like, actually, we sorted it out. We're good. And I was like, this was a perfect system. This was a perfect system. Thank you. I mean, that is something that happens at work all the time where I can kind of tell like, what are the tasks that come up? They might come up in a meeting and people are like, oh, yeah, we should totally do that. They just and said it, just and wait. I'm being too accommodating. Yeah. Right. If you just wait yeah. a little bit, they're not going to ask about it anymore. There's way more important things. They're going to figure out how to do it themselves, like, whatever it is. I and love that's, it. These, these that's these the are strategy the lessons, of life. These are the, it is the strategy of life. These are the things that nobody talks about, but everybody's doing, and I feel like I'm the last person to learn about them. Oh yeah. I love it. I love it. I love you, hearing. Yeah. I feel like um, maybe because the beginning part of your like working life was not in like a corporate setting. Yeah, like this you is have so, to, you learn this yes. stuff so quickly. I like, love, I love with business. Yes. I love the, like, I honestly find obviously, I don't know. I find corporate dynamics it's fucking fascinating and office dynamics fascinating and there's it's just like when I entered that world I was 27 before I'd ever really sat in an office and there were just so many rules that were like so obvious to everyone and I was like you do what you can just do what <laughs> it was so crazy to me and I still find it fascinating because I still just spent a very limited time there like maybe four years but um yeah, yeah. I don't know I love it I saw this really funny reel this week that I shared to my story um where this guy basically there's this guy who each of his reels is like a different very standard title in the corporate world and he's like hi i'm a project manager i don't know what my projects are about but i just collect the updates and then share them with the stakeholders whatever and he also he does them he has one for like it he has one for like business analysts like lots of those kind of standard 
um, jobs where like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, no shade to people with those jobs. I'm sure you do something important, but I can speak on behalf of someone who was doing project management and consulting for eight years. Like you're, you don't, you're not doing anything. You're setting up the meetings and then you're letting the people talk on the meeting and you're taking the notes and you don't really understand the content of the notes, but you're just taking them. And then this you is send what them you, this is, to the this leadership. Is your, okay. This was you as a project manager. Yeah, I mean, I I, mean, I would give yeah. myself a little credit of like understanding some of it, but um, a yeah. lot of the stuff that I was managing is like kind of above my head, like way more technical than right, my yeah. education really is. And I picked up, I picked up an understanding of it along the way, but that wasn't really my job. I wasn't there to like add substantive thoughts and content. I was there to keep everyone organized, and like Listen, that's a valid. Skill, I, like you know? I would say on one hand communication is everything we're nothing without communication <laughs> and a product leader is a facilitator and they're a communicator and I'm saying this because I actually value them so much like being in tech way if we didn't have a good project manager I really like loved a good project manager you know what I mean it that's really nice to hear difference. And also all <laughs> jobs are stupid. All jobs are stupid. All jobs are almost nothing. It turns out that most of the jobs we're doing aren't anything. And like, what yeah. the hell? I have a podcast. They're <laughs> fake. They're, all these jobs are fake. And that's one of my favorite, one of the best benefits of, um. I don't know why this came, why did this happen? This discovery for everybody in COVID of working remotely where everyone just realized that most of us could do our jobs in like four hours. Like I most know. of us could do our jobs in like four hours. And we just been spreading them out like cream cheese to fill a fucking bagel sandwich of our work day in the office. <laughs> that spreading wasn't, them. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't my best metaphor. But yeah, we just been spreading it out. And then if we go home, everyone can do their job in like four hours. Spreading it out like your butt cheeks at your laser appointment. <laughs> I did it. I did I it. I have been, I have, yeah, I should, I really, which really reminds me, my real job is to circle back on that and give an update. I've been, Please spreading them I did I take almost every piece of advice that you end up giving me when you told me <laughs> to add um to my dating profile that I was a YouTuber and just put it on the profile put my name let people go look at the fact that I'm a YouTuber and if they don't like it they never have to date me yeah. um did that date number one got a boyfriend so yeah. success um then went to my next lasering appointment. I was like, well, I'd just like to give a little bit of feedback about the butt cheeks, which is that, <laughs> which is that I feel like there's still a lot coming in there. And she's like, well, let's let you, you got to spread them and do this, whatever, you know? So I've been spreading them. I'm really happy to hear that. I'm pretty happy about it. I think she's pretty happy about it. It's hard to, okay. it's hard to tell. She's hard to read. She's hard to read. I'm like, uh, Sometimes I'm like, are you happy about this? And she's like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Can you imagine? She's not said that. She's not my said laser, that. Can you imagine? My laser tech is hard to read. <laughs> yeah, she's hard to read. Can you imagine my asked her how she was feeling about my hairlessness? <laughs> I just want to do a check-in. But you do have to do those, like, again, it's going back to the small talk with your neighbors. It's like the small talk that happens when you're getting your, like, ass waxed or something like you just have to be like oh has today been busy like yeah totally. a lot of That's people the... coming in to get their their yeah. hair removed cool a lot of sluts coming in and out today <laughs> great yeah. you see a lot of sluts great yeah big weekend big weekend for the sluts. big weekend right. it's pride big in DC. Weekend. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh it's good yeah, i'm glad so. that you take that advice um I, I will do, listen, I will do pretty much anything anyone <laughs> tells me in, in any kind of authoritative voice, which you have. I do. Oh, that's something that like, I shouldn't have. I'm, so, this is actually something that's thrown people off about me. I think a lot, okay. which is like, I say things in a very like assured way, right. but I'm almost never sure of what I'm saying, or pretty I'm cool. very like flexible on it. Like I could say one thing and then you could tell me, oh, actually like blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, oh yeah, yeah that sounds right. And right. and then I would say that thing with just as much assuredness as I said the thing before. <gasps> like I just talk that in that scary. way for some I just, reason. I just am talking like, I'm just out here talking and seeing what lands. <laughs> Maybe that's also my history as a project manager and consultant. Like I just have to say things in an authoritative way, but I don't know. Uh, you could tell me it's different and I'd believe you. And then yeah. I'd say that. Love. Um, speaking of like circling back on things, please, somebody wrote a comment 
where they were like, Jess, I'm dying to get the update. I mean, there's really not that much of an update, girl, but I'll say a word or two. Um, dying to get the update about my ugly night with my boyfriend and how that oh, went. What was it? Yeah, we don't follow up on anything. We don't. We just talk into the abyss and then we forget. But, I mean, it was great. It was great. Obviously, he leaves space for everything that I am, which is many different things, including ugly, like a few <laughs> nights a week. <laughs> and um we had a nice time we did face masks uh he's yeah. gotten really into speaking of my turby twist from earlier in the episode he's gotten into borrowing my turby twist because he has like lots of hair that he needs to like dry in a certain way anyway we Cute. were just ugly together and it was beautiful and i sent caroline a picture and thanks for asking you still looked very beautiful in it so that is I... absolutely not true but thank you I... it was the okay. face mask <laughs> it was a face I, yeah you still look beautiful because your face was entirely it covered, was covered. That'd, be, that'd be a crazy thing to say your face was not, not covered in it but that <laughs> would be a funny way to insult someone here's something we could do okay that we've been promising no because I, as i think about this i don't actually know how long we can spend on it so maybe it's good for the for like the the end of this episode okay. um astrology and looking at our compatibility on co-star that app i made you download yeah okay we could try it because also <laughs> okay. i don't want to do a whole deep dive episode on it because i know some people absolutely hate it um yeah but as a little segment do, i don't want to do anything too deep that doesn't apply to anybody else listening like this literally doesn't apply yeah, to anyone that's but a good point. um but could be chill could still be chill we are not experts and we're going to spend not a lot of time on this because there's probably not a lot to say because we don't know what we're talking about. But we're going to say a little because I personally do love to follow my horoscope. I don't look at it every day, but whenever I feel like it or catch a glimpse of it or something, it's fun. It's fun. It's have fun. you ever heard of fun? Have you, heard of, have you ever heard of fun? God, Thank please. you. Yes. And especially when I'm going through, there was a period in like 2021 when I was going through like a a breakup from a situation ship and like that's when I'm really on on these astrology apps like needing to know every day what's in need store answers. for me yeah. yeah I need answers so we downloaded well I already have and Caroline downloaded CoStar I know there's a lot of astrology apps that's the one we picked I will talk about my chart so at the top of CoStar Caroline you can see three signs yeah mine are my son is Cancer my birthday is July 16th uh, my moon is Libra and my rising is Sagittarius. Okay, Wait, what are yours? Fuck is this? Wait, I, I'm immediately lost. Are we looking at our compatibility. Oh wait, I like this. I like this part. It says, it says, just a bakey can touch your heart without you trying to control what it means. Just a bakey can handle all of you right now. Oh. Go, go, go on. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Get stick and pokes of your favorite animals together. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. okay. It says the same thing on my side about you, that you can oh. touch my heart. Oh. So that's how we feel about oh. each other today. Okay. Do you think that's, that's accurate? I thought it was going to say a specific effect you have on me. No, they're not that advanced. They, this what is the all hell? fake. Remember what that this hell? is all fake. Well, I know that, but I thought it was going to be at least a fake thing for you and then a different fake thing I for know. me. I know. I know. I would have liked right. that too. You read me the important things then, I guess. So for things we align on or are compatible on, um, basic identities, intellect and communication, we both are Leos there. Sex and aggression, we're both Virgos there. Oh, we're the same in so many places. Wait. So Virgo and Cancer, that's our sun signs, are like compatible signs. A lot of my friends are Virgos. So this tracks. Then for intellect and communication, sex and aggression, philosophies of life, and senses of responsibility, we have the same signs in our chart. So we're Okay, but it says that we are not compatible on love and pleasure, but it also says that you can handle all of me right now. So what gives? That's the sex and aggression. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, this is why this fuck, I, this is like, I try to get on board with the astrology thing. Listen. But then it says shit like this. It's saying something specific to you and I. It's saying, this is a fucking insight. It thinks this is an insight. You have to work to understand each other's moods and emotions. Okay, so that applies to all people who've ever lived forever and ever. <laughs> what the fuck is that? That's not an insight. Come on. 
Yeah, but that's just how it works. If you were receiving that at a time when it was really, really relevant, you'd be like, (laughs) whoa, you know what I mean? (laughs) You'd be like, I am doing that work right now. I'm clicking on sex and aggression. Okay. It says, it just says your passion and sexuality are extremely compatible. You're both, okay. You both assert yourselves in a way that is precise and you both push things forward with diligence, intention, and hard work. You both are rarely, (laughs) hold on. This is part of sex and aggression? Yeah. You both are rarely willing to go out on a limb. Your tendency to be intentional and analytical means you both need to know that the situation is right before you both act. Your passion and sexuality are extremely compatible. Those two paragraphs have nothing to do with each other. No, I also I don't think are true. I don't think they're true based on what we, the little we've shared about our sex personas. I think they're different. The fuck? Okay. But maybe that means compatible. Maybe that does mean compatible. Well, yes, exactly. It's not that we're the same. It's that we're compatible. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, I, I took a couple screenshots of uh, DMs from listeners do there's one. another okay do so one. i there's another not a personality that i also thought was really good okay liking puns first of all okay don't even get me started we don't have enough time for this okay i know this is a big one liking puns as a personality making anything your personality sure puns aren't funny puns are the lowest attempt at humor they're not funny um they're not they're not even dad jokes i don't they're it's like I, what are they? They're barely they're barely anything. Word at all. I, play, have, I, I have no space for wordplay. Yeah, I have no <laughs> space for puns in my life. And now and then there's like this expectation that I need to like applaud you after you share your pun. I I truly couldn't care less. I'll never get those seconds back into my life. No. Agree. I couldn't agree more. Um I'm really like, good at puns. Why would you ever even say that? Like, why would you ever even say that? I'm what really happens? good at I'm really good at eating mud. Like why why are you bragging about this? <laughs> So a thing I've noticed with puns too is like, it's, yeah, it's the lowest hanging fruit. It's like the bottom of the totem pole. It's the easiest and most boring and least funny version of comedy. I, and- I'm not even saying, I'm not even saying it's easy. Cause like, I can't do it, but like, I also can't stack toothpicks vertically end to end. <sighs> it's hard. Uh, and you have to just like put some time and effort towards it, but that doesn't make it funny. The yeah. toothpicks aren't comedy and neither is a pun. I can't, I'm not, I'm not good at be, I'm, I don't be good at doing it, but it doesn't make it funny. I'm not good at it either, but I still think easy is the wrong word because it's not easy for everyone, but there's something very like Pathetic. rudimentary about it or, or right. something like it's very basic. Yeah. There's and no I, insight. There's no point of view. There's no creative yeah, thought. It's that's just what like it is. math. It's just like letter math. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's no, there's no thought behind it. There's, or there's no like, yeah, perspective. Yeah. There's um, no perspective. Which when you learn in a stand up class on the first day that like everything has to have a perspective, you have to have a perspective on any single line of comedy that you write. And if you, if it doesn't hit, that's probably because you didn't have a strong enough perspective. So, Anyway, I feel like in corporate settings, um, puns are like leaned Ugh. on a lot when they're trying Which to be says so much. About it stuff. says so much because they're so safe because you can't really offend anyone with a pun. Right. Which is why I'm not a fan. If there's no chance of offending someone, are you saying anything at all? <laughs> but what ends up happening is because people know that I have done comedy and I have a podcast and all these things, oh, anytime wow. there's like a going away party for someone or a like they want us to do a cute little like performancey type of bit or like funny video or whatever at the beginning of some conference meeting for the company they come to I'm one of the like go-to people that they always come to at any of my jobs and they're like oh Jess is like fun and funny she can like come up with maybe some like she can rewrite a song with new words and make it about our company or she can like write some puns about like God. that utilize like language that we always use in our That's business hell. That's hell. like that type of comedy yeah and, and i'm always write a, write a limerick that. about the last quarter <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's the worst thing in the world and that's so what puns bad. make me think of like unfunny so co-workers funny. yeah who <laughs> just want to like find some glimmer of hope in their day and i just want no part in it and I don't laugh. 
we condemn we condemn to hell not a personality not a personality on that note today this has been not for everyone you guys have tuned in and that's on you um i'm gonna give i I feel like we should give like one specific request or call out to people at the end of the episode okay this is a share i don't think this is a high share i'm gonna say i'm gonna make one big request to everybody today i'm gonna say listen don't do nothing else but if you want to go leave a review today's the day to leave a review i'd love love getting silly reviews we love first of all let me clarify again i would like a good review please don't be leaving me some lukewarm review i'm not interested we're looking for good reviews and Mm -hmm. if you have to lie so be it that's just something you're going to do for me today you're going to leave a nice review and that's really all you have to do other than that i hope you enjoy your day and um, i love when you get bossy yeah. That's the sex and aggression of it all. <laughs> That's the sex and aggression coming out. Um, and you can also write in with topics that you want your hot take on, a neutrally stated topic that you'd like us to deliver a hot take and see if we get it right. Would appreciate. We've gotten some good ones so far. <laughs> and I do, I very much appreciate that people get that we're like, give it to us neutral, even though oh, I yeah. maybe I can guess what your opinion is. I, yeah. I would like to do the exploring. No. So thank you for writing those. They have delivered yeah. very well. They've delivered very well on some topics that I was like, oh, what do I think of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. We'll do a we'll do a full hot takes episode yeah. um in the next few weeks, hopefully. So thanks for being here, y'all. Talk to you Love soon. You. Bye. Kisses.